finding stuff out that you want to know. Just ask me a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends on. Finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Sorry about the noise. My cousin's visiting with her baby, and it's a little loud in the house. Ah, he finally went to sleep. I mean, I don't mind too much. Babies are neat, but my sister is driving me crazy today. She's copying everything I say, like this. Stop copying me. Stop copying me. I mean it. I mean it! The only defense is to say stuff she can't copy. Large Hadrum Collider. Large Hadrusser Provider. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. I woke up the baby. I can guess what happens next. Harrison, I told you not to wake up the baby. Sorry, Mom. So I've been thinking a lot about babies and families lately, and apparently so have you, because you've sent me a lot of questions. Here's a question from Kalia. Why do we have families? The short answer is to drive us crazy. But seriously, sometimes it's hard putting up with crying babies, copycat sisters, and stressed out parents. But there must be a good reason why we have families. I'll find out the answer and your other questions about babies and families by the end of the show. Here's a question from Alana. Why are brothers annoying? Is that your little brother that copies you all the time? That is annoying. But I checked and found out there's a reason that our little brothers and sisters copy us. Have you ever heard the expression, monkey see, monkey do? Well, monkeys learn by imitating others. Us humans can't help wanting to copy. It's in our nature. It's how your parents learn to do stuff, and your grandparents, and your great-grandparents. We're naturally copycats. I know you are, but what I am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? But what am I? I know you are, 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 but what am I? I found out that copying is a good way to learn to do something. Like tracing a picture helps you learn how to draw. We always want to copy, but that's why TV shows always say, don't try this at home. But to indulge your urge, here's today's... Uh-oh, do try this at home. How good are you at monkey see, monkey do? If I play a drum rhythm, do you think you can copy it just by watching? Here. Did you get that? I'll break it down for you. And that's how I learned how to drum, by learning each thing slowly. Here's another thing I'm trying to learn. Breakdancing is really hard because you have to move super fast. But if I slow it down for you, does that make it easier? Not for me, not yet, but I'll keep practicing. Drumming and breakdancing may look like they're just fun, but they actually help our reflexes, balance, and even sharpen our mental skills, too. And when baby animals look like they're playing, they're actually learning, too. These cubs are practicing skills they'll need later on to hunt. But enough fun and games. Let's take another question. Why do turtles not care about their babies? Turtles never know their parents. Mom turtles just lay their eggs and leave. When the baby turtles hatch, they're on their own. They don't need parents around because they already know what to do. 
other cold-blooded animals like frogs and lizards do the same thing. They lay eggs and leave. Animals that don't take care of their babies have to lay lots of eggs because their babies get eaten by predators. Don't listen to this. Only one in a thousand turtles that are hatched survive. One in a thousand? If I were a turtle, this is how many Harrisons it would take for one of us to become a grown-up. I'm not sure how my mom would feel about having a thousand of me. She already says I'm a handful. But scientists once thought that human parents should be more like turtles. Yar, har, har. The Flat Earth Corner! I, John Watson, will prove that babies do better without parents who pay attention to them. Being loved makes babies weak. I want to raise strong, unloved babies in baby farms! A hundred years ago, this scientist named John Watson decided that attention for babies was bad. He thought that they shouldn't be picked up, cuddled, or talked to. He was wrong. Today we know that a baby's brain is busy making all kinds of nerve connections. If grown-ups don't talk to a baby, its brain can have trouble learning language. Ignoring a baby can even stunt its brain growth. Fortunately, human nature makes us want to cuddle babies and say silly things to them. Oh, got you go, baby. <clears throat> I, I don't actually like babies. I'm just, uh... I'm just testing their hearing. Yeah, that's it. Here's a question from Brianna. Why do babies poop a lot in their diapers? Humans don't like being around poop, obviously. Uh-oh. But babies don't have a lot of control over their bodies at first. When we're born, we can't even hold our head up, much less remember to flush. So until babies are more developed, they make lots of smelly diapers. It's weird. Mr. Whiskers isn't as smart as a human, but he learned how to use a litter box right away. Cats are born wanting to bury their poop. It's their natural way of avoiding predators. Even if there are no predators in your home, your cat doesn't want to take any chances. But what about other animals? I'm here with Lisa at the zoo to learn about poo. We're here at the gorilla enclosure today, and you can see the gorillas kind of go wherever they please. It's a really, really big job for the zookeepers to clean up every day. Oh, I wouldn't want to clean that up. I guess I shouldn't really complain about cleaning up my cat's litter box. No, not really. <laughs> you know, with cats, they instinctively will go into a litter box and bury their poo because they're trying to hide their scent. Right. And with animals like dogs, they don't want to go where their den is, so you can train them to poop outside. Oh. But in the zoo, it's really more difficult because the gorillas, they'll just go where they want to go. So how much poo is created here at the zoo every day? About 15 bridge-sized garbage can fulls. Yeah. 15 garbage cans? That's a lot of poo. Oh, oh, where's the toilet paper? Now here's a question about animal babies from Janik. Why do animal babies grow faster than human babies? Oh. Right. I heard that animals mature in one to two years. If we did that, we'd be grown-ups before we started preschool. It's true. With the elephants that you see behind us, they seem quite helpless when they're born, but they're actually able to walk and keep up with the herd when they're only a day old. Wow, but human babies seem pretty helpless compared to that. It's true. Human babies are helpless. But other animals mature at different rates, too. For example, kittens and some birds are actually born with their eyelids fused together still. Some baby animals, like these tigers, are born very small, but they'll grow very big. Some animals, like joeys, are actually about the size of my thumb when they're born, and they're not fully mature until they're seven to 10 months. What's a joey? Oh, that's a kangaroo. Oh. They have to stay in the pouch until they're fully mature. That's so small. <laughs> so why do animals grow up at different speeds? Basically, the more complex an animal is, the longer it needs to develop. So an animal like a fish, is ready to go almost right away. Other animals take more time. Right, well, thanks for helping me find stuff out. No problem. Now Thomas has a question about babies. Why are babies so delicate? To help find out, please welcome my special guest, pediatric nurse, Stacy Baker.
Welcome to my show. So how's my cousin's baby doing? He's perfect, just like you. <laughs> How did you calm him down? Some babies just love to be rocked and held. Do you want to hold him? I don't know. I, I, I don't actually know if I should. It's OK. Babies are not as fragile as we think they are. It's just that babies are born with really big, heavy heads, and the muscles that have to hold it up in their neck aren't very strong. So when you hold a baby, you just have to make sure that you support their neck. You want to try? Sure. Like this. Support their neck? Yeah, just make sure you hold his neck like that. There you go. Am I doing it right? You're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Let's rock. What do you want? It's okay. It's okay. Look. I guess I just don't have that special baby touch. <laughs> so Thomas was wondering why babies are so delicate. Well, babies are in their mummy's belly for about nine months, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to come out because they just get too big. But they're not fully developed yet. It takes months before a baby's able to sit up, maybe four, five, six months before the baby's able to crawl, and then up to a year before the baby's able to walk. So how come humans are so helpless for so long? Our brains are really complex. Right. Uh, at nine months, they're definitely not fully developed. Actually, they're not fully developed until they're about 21 years old. In the meantime, babies are still pretty cute. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're so cute, yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> I mean, a lot of other people think so, too. Why are babies so cute? <laughs> Street smarts. So what makes babies so cute? They talk funny. They're just so small and, they, yeah, they're just cute. They're naturally cute. They're just, <laughs> yeah. I like it when they sleep because their lips are like moving and then it goes like <laughs> <laughs> I can hold them and their feet are as big as my thumb and they're soft. They're soft. They're soft. <laughs> and they all love me. I just love their legs. They're just so squeezable. <laughs> I like newborns because they have no teeth. <laughs> I just love their adorable laugh. It always makes me laugh. Hey, I think it's time that we pretend like we're babies. Uh. <laughs> Mama. the baby back to your cousin. I think he was hungry. Must be lucky to be that cute. I can never get away with making that much noise. I actually think that we're programmed to think that babies are cute. What do you mean by programmed? It's kind of like human animal instinct. It's built in. You mean we just know we have to take care of babies? That's how humans survive? Yeah. Babies need a lot of care in the beginning. We really need to take care of them, and we need to want to take care of them. Right. I found out that a lot of animals that we think are cute have the same characteristics as human babies. Oh, they're so cute with your big arms and your big head and your smile. Oh, they're so cute. Oh. <coughs> Even some cartoon characters have some of the same characteristics. For instance, if I were a cartoon character and you wanted to make me look really cute, you'd make my head bigger and you'd make my eyes really large. And you'd make my arms short. And you'd probably give me a squeaky little voice, too. I'm a cutie pie. I wonder if that's why my sister talks baby talk every time she wants mom to buy her something. Oh, please, 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 can I have it? And it works a surprising amount of the time. Maybe my parents are programmed to think it's cute. Anyway, next time your parents tell you to stop watching cartoons, tell them you can't help it and that you're programmed to like cute, big-eyed cartoon characters. Again? Why do babies cry so much? Yeah, so you're a pediatric nurse. Why do babies have to cry all the time? Because that's the only way they have to communicate. Well, they don't have much to say. On the contrary, they actually have tons to say. Babies don't have their words until they're about one. So crying is their way of communicating how hungry they are, if they're thirsty, if they're not feeling well, if they have a tummy ache. We want them to communicate. <laughs> <sighs> so if I have a baby someday, and he doesn't start talking until he's one years old, and then he has to cry every time he wants something. So how much crying will I have to listen to? A lot. Let's see. My cousin's baby drinks milk every three hours, plus burping after every meal. 
That equals eight burps a day, plus rocking to sleep, plus four naps a day, plus a bedtime at 8 p.m., times 365 days, plus if he's too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer, my head's getting hot too. Ah! You're gonna make my head explode. How may I serve you, oh crying one? Would you like a blankie? <laughs> Would you like a bottle? <laughs> Would you like Harrison's favorite teddy bear, Mr. Uh, Snugglesworth, uh, to drool all over? <laughs> Harrison. Harrison. Oh, sorry. I didn't get much sleep last night with the baby crying. You said crying is communication, but it doesn't sound like much. Uh, yeah, actually, it is communication. Some parents actually believe that they know what the baby needs by the way that the baby cries. So do all babies have the same cries, or, or do they have different cries? Like, do they have their own? Babies all cry probably for the same things, but experts believe that certain babies cry depending on what they need, and we should understand what they need depending on basically the way they cry. I wish my parents anticipated everything that I want. Whoa, it worked. Thanks for helping us find stuff out. No problem, Harrison. Enjoy your milkshake. Speaking of milk, here's a question from Elizabeth. Why is my baby brother drink so much milk? <laughs> I found out that babies drink so much milk because for a long time, it's the only food that they can eat. Before babies can learn to swallow regular food, milk is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But if you want to know who drinks more milk than your baby brother, it's time for... My Great Challenge! Today, my great challenges are Jaden... Hey. ...and Haley. Yay! A baby cow drinks two of these every single day. But he doesn't use a bottle. A baby calf drinks milk straight from his mom. Human babies can also drink milk straight from their moms. But we also drink cow milk, and to do that, we have to get the milk out of the cow. Okay, so your challenge is to milk these cows and get as much milk as you can in one minute. The person with the most milk at the end of the minute will be the winner. Sound good? Yep. Yeah. Are you ready to milk this challenge? Yeah. You have one minute. Go! Real cows have four teeth. That's the nipple that the milk comes out of but our challengers have their hands full with two. Haley's already got the hang of it. Oh, Jaden's getting it now too. 30 seconds. Farmers milk cows twice a day. A cow can make enough milk to fill 27 cartons every day. That's more than 100 glasses. 15 seconds. I hope the loser won't cry over spilled milk. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop milking. A pretty close race here. It looks like the winner is Haley. Yay! Congratulations. So what was it like milking a cow? It felt all wet because I was missing. It was, you were missing the bucket a lot, and what about you? It's hard. It's hard? What was the hardest part about the challenge? Aiming the bucket. The hurting of the thumbs. Oh, your thumbs started to hurt? Awesome, well thanks for playing my great challenge. And I'll never take a milkshake for granted again. Here's another question. Why are the parents so bossy? Good question, Grayson. I checked the answer and it turns out human parents aren't the only ones. Animal parents are bossy too, from elephants to kangaroos. Any mammal in the zoo is telling its own kids what to do. Wipe your paws, don't play with your prey. Crowd to scare the humans away. Get in a cave and go to sleep. Don't provoke the wild beasts. Animal parents are bossy too, so animal kids learn what to do. Animal parents are bossy too, so animal kids learn what to do. Yeah! A 
turns out the reason parents are bossy is because they have to keep us safe and teach us how to be grown-ups. I know you are, but what I am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are. They learned how to do that from their parents. I know you are, but what am I? Who learned it from their parents? Who learned it from their parents? I know you are, but what am I? I guess that brings us back to the question that gave birth to this show. Why do we have families? The big answer is... Survival! Living in families helped our human ancestors survive. It helps us, too. Families take care of us when we're sick and when we're babies and can't do anything for ourselves. And we can take care of them, too. We're all better off when we take care of each other. Even if sometimes we drive each other crazy. I know you only copy me because you want to be just like me. Gross! I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? See you next time for more Finding Stuff Out. See you next time for more Finding Stuff Out. <laughs>